Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the first race of 2022 for the Prototype Cup Germany. We're at Spa Frankisham. I'm John Heindorf, and alongside me is Ben Constant Juris. We'll give you the rundown of the grid in just a moment. But first, let's go to Nick Dearman with a little look at what the weather and the atmosphere is like. Good morning, Nick. How are you? I'm great. Good morning, John. Yes, it's a marvellous sunny day near the Ardem Forest. Ben made that very clear. We're not in the Ardem Forest. It's near it. But it's a beautiful day, totally not spa weather. And I am experiencing a first. It's the first time in the 26 years I've been doing this uh, business called show of covering motorsport that I'm in what we call the heritage pits here in Spa with the massive downhill. Now, if you look over here to my right with four people in picnic chairs, that's part of the massive works that's been going on over the last, um, well, six months really, ever since the big floods last spring and summer. Lots of work. I'm sure the boys will point out round the track where the obvious visual differences are, but they're build, building, still building grandstands. They're still levelling wood. Wood? Yeah, woods, levelling woods. Um, but, of course, we have the first ever round of the Prototype Cup Germany. The cars will be starting from the start finish on the F1 start. This, of course, is the old fashioned one, one of these those fantastic shots in the 1960s of Formula One cars barreling down the hill. Uh, in fact, if you're a fan of Grand Prix, one of the greatest, 1966 film, of course, one of the greatest ever sequences were filmed here at Spa. And if you aren't a fan, you should be by the DVD. Anyway, um, the cars will be in this pit lane because it's a one-stop race. It's an hour, it was 50 minutes, sorry. And halfway through, approximately, they have to change drivers. Um, but... I think, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll let you go, but as soon as the cars come back for the little trip round the track, we'll be talking to drivers about how 25 minutes round the new spa really feels. New spa looking very sprightly and a smattering of spectators, as Nick mentioned, up on some of the cleared areas. There's still a huge amount of work going on and we expect to see some more grandstands built in that area running down past the old start finish line in the old pitch to drivers left there. The retaining wall has been pushed back. There's more gravel traps being put in. There's a brand new hospitality area and grandstand at the top of Radion looking back down uh, through Eau Rouge to where uh, Nick was talking to us from the pit lane. Here comes the safety car, the Audi, taking them across the line. Now, I was expecting to see the time start at that no. point. <laughs> Uh, yeah, John, we're all quite surprised as they are ushering us uh, or ushering the teams onto the effective dummy grid oh, of okay. the downhill start finish, which is against all the briefings we've had so far. Right, so this is good news for you because that means you won't be able to speak to the drivers because they'll be in the car, but you will be able to take us through the grid, Nick, when they come to you, which they will uh, in a short amount of time. Here comes the, the Audi safety car, which is... Is that an RS4, Nick? Uh, it's certainly an Audi, so why my Audi? I'm not sure it's the RS. I'm sure it would be something sporty. It's not painted in the correct colour. It should be kind of flat grey if you're going to get an RS4. <laughs> um, yes, it's uh, it's got the uh, cheese grater grill. Let's have a look on the... Yeah, it's an RS4. Very nice. Um, so the, they're kind of lined up. This is, yeah, I think this is a voyage of discovery for all of us, to be honest. The cars were initially lined up in a line and... Uh, now they are uh, left and right. So on pole, it's the 24, uh, the right of engineering car of Florent uh, Jantis and Elke Angermeyer. Next to him is the kind of spider's web red car. That's the seven machine of Toxport WRT uh, with Burkan Besler and uh, Marvin Dienst. Uh, moving back to third, I think this is third. Uh, they're a little bit kind of kiggledy piggledy. The 777 car uh, of into Europol uh, with Damio Klosek and James Winsler. You're not going to miss that one, are you, really? It's a <laughs> bright green and yellow. Next to them, the 21 car. That is the machine of Mullen Motorsport with uh, Donar Munding and Matthias Learning. I'm sorry, I don't actually know from this, guys, who the starting driver is, but we'll find out pretty soon. Uh, <laughs> on to the third row. It's the... Um, the, the sort of 
the Bio Circle car, the number two machine, it looks a little bit to me like a Petronas car as well, but hopefully it's going better than the uh, very well-known Petronas cars. That's the Conrad Motorsport car. Should have had the legend that is Franz Conrad, but he found that the um, cockpit was too tight on the left-hand side, and he damaged his elbow. So, um, oh, here's an old friend. Hello, Ralph. How are you? Ralph Jutner, nice to see you. <laughs> I'm good, thank you. You, you, turn up you turn up in unexpected places. What are you doing here? Oh, I'm uh, helping a little bit around with Franz and uh, enjoying racing again. So there is, uh, we have to ask you this. Obviously, you are known as the man behind, you know, with um, Dr. Ulrich for Audi, Yoast and all the uh, Le Mans successes. Le Mans about to explode next year. LMDH, Hypercar, who are you going to be working for? Um, sorry, I'm <laughs> somebody on the radio right now. Um, yeah, looking forward to see what's going to happen. Uh, I hope all the announcements come true, and uh, if that's the case, it should be uh, nice years. So you, you, mu you must have had some offers, surely? Um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm really out since like two years, retired, and just come back a little bit here with Franz. Right, just practice prototypes. Thanks, oh, Ralph. Yeah. You're the, the legend. And behind me is another legend, Franz Conrad. Franz, you should have been in that car with Axel Jeffries. What happened? Uh, I had an, uh, a little accident about 12 days ago, and uh, I had a big crash on my elbow. And looks like it's a little bit bone off, and uh, now I cannot work with my fingers perfectly. And uh, then yesterday I decided to don't go in a car, so it's dangerous here. Let's see, I don't get work on the steering, it's bad for me, so I'm bad for the, everybody. And then I decided I, I go out and gave up. It's a shame, I like spa and uh, I really appreciate to come here. And I appreciate that the new series, uh, that the German people do a nice job. And I think they will be growing, looks like, uh, immediately. And there will be, in the end, a good series and uh, we will have fun. Great, thanks, thanks, Franz. Next to that Comrade car, which is full of stars, Axel Jeffries, also a bit of a star driver, is the Wockenspiegel uh, machine. Now, this is, um, what, well, basically it's two-thirds of the guys you are going to see starting on pole for the main event. I say it's the main event, the Creventic 12 Hours of Spa. It's Leo Weiss and Torsten Krantz, so they're getting extra laps. I wonder how transferable what you're learning in a prototype, a P3 prototype, is to a GT3 Ferrari. Right, so next up is the 70 Ferrari uh, being waved on. Following that, it's the number four Nielsen racing car of John Nelson and Matt Bell. Then we have the 72 machine of uh, Conica Motorsport, Jesse Salamento and Sebastian Arnhem. Then the 12 car of racing experience from Luxembourg, Sebastian van Gartsen and Gaddy Hausen. And on the back, it's the five car speed factory racing from Lithuania of Giorgio Rosa and Santiago Concepcion. Serrano, and that's your grid for the first ever German Prototype Championship race. Thank you very much indeed, Nick Tierman, who makes his way past another couple of Audi safety cars on the back of the grid. Let me uh, introduce Ben Constantjuras this fine Saturday morning on a busy weekend. We do have a second race uh, for this championship tomorrow, one before we restart the Hankook 12 hours here at Spa. Uh, 50 minutes, 5-0 minutes, plus a lap, Ben, and a mandatory pit stop in the middle, even for Axel Jeffrey, who is a, a single driver. Absolutely, because you want to make it as fair as possible for those that are sharing the car. And of course, being a 50 minute race, an endurance race, having two drivers, that's all, all part of it. And the idea of this, much like it is for the, the uh, Big Daddy series or the Creventic series, is to bring through drivers and give them more experience uh, in LMP3 cars to go on to other championships that uh, run these cars and of course LMP2 and progress up through the ranks and, and so you need a pit stop to change the drivers and therefore to make it fair everybody uh, has to make a stop even if you're one driver and actually you get a bit more of a penalty if you are a single driver. The pit stop window opens at 20 minutes in and uh, it closes at 30 minutes in, so around right about the middle of the race. There are different pit stop coefficients depending on the grades of your driver pairing. Your standard pit stop is 95 seconds pit in to pit out, 
you add 10 seconds if you have a silver driver and a bronze rather than two bronze. I don't think we have... No, we don't have two bronze drivers here. You add another 10 seconds if you've got two silvers, etc. As you go up, you get another 10 seconds. If you are a single driver, you take your upper grade driver and add five seconds to it. Uh, so that is your penalty for staying in the car and still being focused and hot, I suppose. So that will play out in between 20 and 30 minutes of the race elapsed. It is a 50 minute, five zero minutes with one further lap at the end. Uh, because of the length of the track here, I think the rest of the season, you'll see them running 55 minutes plus a lap. But here, because of the extra length of Spa at over five kilometers, four miles, then uh, the fuel tanks are getting close to optimal in terms of, of how much fuel would be left at the end. But ultimately, it, they're all in the same class. Ultimately, they're all racing. We have a mix of a couple of Ginettas. Uh, the Conrad car is a Ginetta. Uh, also, the Gebhard Motorsport car for Jak Jakob uh, Erlbacher and Michael Herich. Uh, that's a Ginetta. Uh, Ligiers uh, and Duquesne formerly the Norma concern, of course, so three manufacturers as far as the P3 chassis are concerned with those sonorous, fairly low revving V8 engines. They really rattle around the forest. So Ben and I will try and keep you up to date with God, what's going on on the track. Nick will be down in the pit lane for the pit stops and any issues, and they will be stopping in the endurance pits, the downhill pits towards Eau Rouge. Now, they've set off on a partial formation lap, so the safety car lights are already out, and it will accelerate away as they come through Blanchemont and down towards the bus stop, and we will go green at the start line on the Formula One pit straight. So right in front of our commentary box, we look right down to La Source, and we've got a great view. 11 cars there, not a huge field, but nice variety of cars. Red lights are on. 50 minutes are on the clock, and that will start to tick over in about two or three seconds. Green lights are on. Up goes the revs, and straight down the inside, the Inter-Europol car has a look down towards the first corner, but does not improve position. Paul sitting car for Reiter Engineering goes through and plunging down to... Eau Rouge for the first time with the new runoff on the left-hand side. Much more gravel there as well. It's a pretty even start as the lighter-coloured car from Reitner Engineering, the number 24 machine, leads out. And the inter Europol car from the second row of the grid has gone through into second. Yeah, and... Uh... We'll pick up a lovely strip slipstream going down towards uh, Le Com for the first time. Not quite close enough to get down the inside in the braking zone. The top three come through. Fourth, fifth, battle for sixth position side by side. Uh, and the number five, number four car goes through. That's Nielsen racing past GitHub uh, Motorsports. Don't quite have the driver names yet on. Well, we know it has to be Axel Jeffries well, yes. who's, who starts the Conrad car, um, which is uh, sitting in fifth position because he's on his own. Uh, I believe the right engineering car, the number 24, was started by uh, Florian uh, Janitz. So Elke Ongemeyer will be taking that car over. That's your leader at the moment. Right from Toxport in second. Uh, and Inter Europol having the better. I think it was James Winslow's helmet I spotted in the Inter Europol car, the Ligier number 777. That's the uh, green and yellow car. And trying to spot through. It's been a very good start indeed for right at engineering. Florian Janitz, the opening driver in that Ligier, is what we're being told. Top sport with Winslow, triple seven is, let me see, is it Wins uh, James Winslow rather in the triple seven. The number seven, I reckon, is Berke Besler with Marvin Deanst still to come. In oh, that car. Car. Already an issue and the safety car is out for the number seven too. This is the Korean Kempi Motorsport. That number 72 car in the, oh, there's two cars involved and they've, they've come together and it's been quite a, Quite a coming together there, Ben, for the T3 
10th place car as it was, the number 72, with... Now, who started that car? I think that was Sebastian Adenam. And it's a Nielsen Racing number four, which is the one that's uh, missing its rear wing and has quite su substantial damage to the suspension in the rear. That was John Melsom, I think, that started that. I don't think it was Mark Bell who was in that car. So immediately we have the track neutralised. Yeah, that's not Matt Bell getting out the ne Nielsen car. So that at least is correct. Oh, I can't believe that. That is, that is a big accident to the right rear of the Nielsen car with uh, damage to the suspension. He's been into the tyre wall because I can see the red paint yeah. colour on the tyre of the car that has come from the tyre stacks. And that's after Fania Chicane, I think, going before karting. Okay. Not a huge amount of runoff area on the outside of that corner where we have the two cars, one in the gravel, one after the gravel trap. But a place where you would run side by side through the first part, uh, which is the right-hander, and then you've got the left-hander that comes on to a short blast, little straight down to to the double right at Karting and then Stavolo. It's not called Stavolo anymore, but I'm going to call it Stavolo because I like it. Curve Paul Frere. Yes. One of many iterations of those two corners. Yes. Are we still calling Bruxelles Bruxelles then? The downhill uh, after Yes, I think that's, of that's officially correct, right, isn't okay, it? Right, okay. Because it was coming... Rivage. Correct. Yeah. I've, I've be... I was here when it was called Rivage. In fact, the very first time I came here to spectate, I got dragged into the commentary box to do uh, some commentary here on sports cars. The first car I ever saw in anger here, um, we were sitting at the bottom of the run through Eau Rouge up through over the top of the hill. And there used to be a little bar there on the left-hand side, driver's left, literally sitting with a beer and frites and meal. And the first car I saw go through there at speed was a McLaren M8. Wow. In a classic meeting. And I got hauled into the commentary box to do uh, double-handed commentary. And they were brave enough to expect me to do it in French as well. English and I did English and French and somebody else did German. And... Uh, Flemish, I think. I'm wondering whether we've had contact between these two cars or not. The number 72 car with all four wheels still rotating and being towed uh, along the tarmac. So it doesn't look as though it's got any bodywork damage whatsoever. No. Whereas the Nielsen car certainly has been into the tire wall, as you say, the rear right-hand corner folded in, the rear wing uh, missing from that car. I wonder whether the Karinen car simply has gone off in the gravel trap, in avoidance perhaps, and has just got beached just as it comes back onto the racetrack, where there's tarmac again. So the rear tyres in the gravel, the front tyres on the kerb and tarmac, therefore probably the belly of the car uh, on the ground. Uh, and it doesn't look even as though they were that far into the gravel. You can see the, the marks in the gravel trap, and he's only a car's width into the gravel. So exit of Poo on two? No. No, it's not. No, it is Fania. It is Fania, yeah. yeah. It's, it's after the, the left-handed part but of But it Fania. does look, from the camera angle, it does look like it yes. could be, couldn't it? And, and there's more gravel. In fact, there is some gravel on the outside. Duble gauche. Uh, the well, well, there's, uh, there's now there seems to be gravel everywhere on every exit of every corner, whereas, you know, we know Spa is having concrete runoff areas everywhere. It's, uh, it's, we've got gravel everywhere off the track and therefore if you do go off the track you bring it back onto the track and it's going to make quite a, a dirty circuit for endurance racing there's no doubt uh, and a real challenge for the drivers that are used to coming here and, and exploring the outer limits of the tarmac that is no longer there so the time ticks on of course we have had seven minutes and not yet a full green flag lap so the challenge now for the drivers, Ben, is to keep heat in their tyres on a very long circuit that has some very long straights on it. You, it's not just about leaning on the cars through the corner. They'll be going on and off the brakes, particularly when they get the word that the safety car is likely to pull off. And it could be on this lap, actually, because the uh, safety car is just coming into Eau Rouge right now. 
Uh, it did look as though the guys down at Fanyes were doing a pretty good job of removing the Karainen car. The Nielsen car needs to be lifted onto the back of a truck, but they had the truck there. So uh, if this safety car gets round to the end of the lap and the, the, the track is clear, we could go racing again. Writer Engineering leading uh, with the Interpol uh, into Europol, sorry, uh, car in second position, and the Top Sport WRT, not World Rally Team, which is what <laughs> WRT stands for when Top Sport first started, but now they've branched out into GT racing and, and now LMPs as well. And not either Vets Racing Team, which ah, yes. is Vonson Voss. Yeah. Uh, yes, not WRT. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So well, We've got WTM for the uh, Wochenspiel Team Monshu. Yeah. There's uh, far too many three-letter acronyms here. Yeah. Or, although I see in this particular uh, entry list, they are the full name rather than in our Creventic race that kicks off uh, at around midday local time. They are WTM Team Ferrari. Yeah. Um, and they've come off the back, actually, of success in the Michelin Cup uh, at Paul Ricard, probably in this very car in the uh, LMP3 machine. But at the moment, same team, same, same driver lineup there. Fourth position so far, but they do have Marvin uh, Dienst aboard that machine. Uh, no, sorry, no. Leonard Weiss yeah. and Torsten Kratz. Uh, Leonard was very fast yesterday, wasn't he, in, uh, in qualifying for Creventic? Uh, delighted to say that thanks to Pitwall.live, who are helping us out this weekend and who will have for the rest of the Hankook 24-hour series this year and their support, I can tell you that... The cars are driven by as follows. 27 writer is uh, Janitz, as we say it. Uh, that is the, the number 24 car with uh, Florian Janitz. In second place, it is indeed James Winslow, so my eyes didn't deceive me there. The British driver behind the wheel of the 777, the yellow and green car. Talk Sport, the number seven, is uh, Becky Besler. Uh, Leon Advice behind the Wockenspiegel team, Monschau, number 11 in fourth. Axel Jeffries, when we knew that one, even I could guess that one. The Jeanette had been driven uh, solo by the Conrad Motorsport driver, Axel Jeffries. Uh, in sixth position, Speed Factory Racing, Giorgio Rosa uh, is behind the wheel of that, the Italian driver. Gebhard Motorsport, intriguingly, the Jeanette there, driven by Jay. Um, but as Gebhardt only has one J, Jakob Erlbacher, Erl I would say that that was him. Uh, and Mulder Motorsport in eighth, the number 21, is Matthias uh, Luthen. Uh, in ninth place, Racing Experience, the number 12, is the Sebastian von Gartzen, the German driver. He'll give over to the Netherlands driver, Gary Hauser, uh, when they finally make their pit stop. Corey and Kemp, be motorsport. Well, we've mentioned the two cars that had the incident. 72 uh, was uh, Sebastian Aranran. And as we said, Nielsen Racing, number 11. And we knew that for sure um, because it was the slightly shorter uh, figure in terms of the driver that got out of that one. Uh, it wasn't Matt Bell, it was the American John Melson. So those were the starting drivers. They were the drivers who qualified um, in the first qualifying session. Um, I suspect we'll see that swapped around in the second race tomorrow. No chance to go live and back to green on that next lap. Some debate, Ben, about what's happened down through Eau Rouge and up all, over the top of Radion. Certainly new tarmac there and the bumps in the middle of the hill, the right-handed part that we've seen cause so many troubles for particularly single-seaters. That's been smoothed out a lot. But there is some debate, quite heated debate, from various people, including members of our team. We can't really decide and we haven't been through there in a car or walked through there yet because of the compressed nature of of the weekend, whether that those two corners, three corners effectively, down through the compression at the bottom, through the left hand, the right hander in the middle, and then Radion at the top, whether they've actually changed radius at all. I think if you overlay two photos of from the, taken from exactly the same place, the white lines are in the same place. I think there is. It You're doesn't being look very like it. specific with your language here, which I like a lot. <laughs> it doesn't look like it, does it? Because we've got a, a change on the approach with the wall on the left hand side totally missing and pushed back yes. a good couple of meters. So different you've got sight lines completely. Much better vision. Yeah. Uh, probably more tempting actually to turn in earlier 
uh, now because you've and, got the sights. And a big flat kerb on the left-hand side. With a sausage first. on the inside. Yes. Which, is, which was always there. Um, but it, for me, it feels like the middle part of that corner has been built up. What happened over last year, as we mentioned yesterday, that the, um, we had a lot of flooding at the bottom of the circuit and it washed away some of the undersoil, which created bumps and cr created ripples in the tarmac. And actually the, the tarmac drops a little bit at certain points. So um, they, I think they've probably built up the middle of that corner to stop that from happening again, which has, of course, smoothened out the whole area uh, as a whole. Uh, it does look as though there's far less bumps. It does look, even from our camera view that we've seen of the Formula 4 race and Creventit yesterday, they, there doesn't seem to be that kind of double bump uh, that there was before. A uh, bit of a disappointment to see the uh, uh, Nielsen car still not yet on the back of the tow truck. They seem to be dragging it, which is a bit... Uh, I'm not sure they can get the tow truck to the right angle at the moment to get Pick that craned on. And yeah. the right rear suspension has collapsed completely after some fairly solid con contact, it would seem, with the stacked tyres to driver's right coming out of Fania, the uh, right-left chicane as you come down the hill from Pouon. I mean, amazing, isn't it, to go through years and years and years of we need tarmac runoff areas everywhere. We must have tarmac areas. And now we look at Spa now with only the exit of Stavlo, which really isn't much of an area where you need uh, tarmac runoff area. It does seem to be one of the only few places where there's a decent amount. Blanchemont does have, what is that, three or four cars width of tarmac before mm. you get to the gravel. A lot of the corners now around the circuit, it's curb gravel straight away. Yeah. And, of course, this is to uh, take account of the fact that top flight motorcycling mm. is coming, motorcycle racing is coming back to Spa. And the, the, Europe, uh, the Endurance World Championship, correct. EWC. Yeah, and they need flatter curbs so that they don't hurt riders if you come off coming into the corners. They like a bit of gravel to slow rider and bike down um, because they're not like cars when they go off it tends that the wheels, the two small contact patches on a motorcycle are not in contact with the ground if you've come off because it's the fairing that's in contact with the ground and your hip, backside or other parts of your anatomy. So I mean, the, what, the thought behind locking everything up and, and scrubbing off speed on tarmac doesn't work for bikes. You just don't slow down. What's it going to be like? Uh, riding a bike through a rouge. I, I'm not a bike rider, you are, John. So the yeah. sensation... I, I, my bike is rather large and rather heavy, but on a sports bike, I, I think it's going to be outstanding, I, I, but scary. Because you're going to, you, what you, your issue is going to be there is whether you bottom out your suspension at, at, yeah. the, at the end, at the end, and then the as it comes back up again, it'll unload the bike in the middle of the corner. And you know how these guys get leaned over. Well, yeah, um, exactly. The, the straight shot from the middle of the uphill through Radion, that you've got, you'll, you'll want to have the bike straight for that very very um strict on bike racing is very very strict on track limits so anything over the white line and that's it you, you'll get pinged for it um it's it's much stricter than than car racing so the green areas on the outside of brussels for example you put anything on the green area on the outside of of brussels that's going to tick off against your name there's also a little bit of new track on the run down to Speaker's Corner, the no-name left, which is the downhill, uh, which is, I believe, what the bikes are going to be using. It's a much more sweeping, fast left-hander rather than what I would expect would be a brake and possibly even a downshift. It's a much more sweeping left-hander. Our race director has told us two things. One, that the pit stop window will be postponed. The pit stop window should have opened at 20 minutes, but if there's a yellow flag, it is postponed because they don't want everybody taking their pit stops under yellow flags, and that the safety car will come in at the end of this lap. I suspect that once we've had a lap of racing, the, the pit stop window will open for its allotted 10 minutes. So it will be the number 24, the Paul Sitting Writer Engineering, uh, the white car that will come down to the green flag on the... Formula One, pit lane, straight, Florian Janitz, yet to hand over to Eka Angemeyer. 
Uh, I would say that Florian is perhaps the faster of the two, so he might wait for the window to the for the end of the window it, yeah, to get point. a couple of extra laps. Whereas we do, we don't have a specific, you know, am driver needs to start the race and then the pro driver does the rest. It is a mix here, so we might see some people diving to the pits as soon as possible, others staying until the end of the window to try and get some gap for their pro driver. If you've got the pro driver in now, you've had hard, well, 20 minutes of the race without having ability to use that far speed of the pro driver. Through the chicane then, and we will go back to green flag racing when they get back onto the F1 pit straights. It's nice and close, the pack. Uh, with Writer Engineering leading into Europol competition over the line, but it's Toxport WRT who's looking a little bit fiery into La Source for the first racing lap proper. Yeah, and the black and red car, that uh, third place car, Toxport, is the, the number seven car of Berke Besler getting a good run now through the new look, let's call it that, the new look all rouge and Radion with the fences again being pushed back, the new hospitality and grandstand to drivers left as they crest the rise through Radion, side by side, down, or actually up the Kemmel Strait because it's a rise all the way. And you can't really get side by side through the chicane at the end of the Kemmel Strait, Le Combe. Now plunging down the hill, downhill braking area to Bruxelles. Been resurfaced there as well. Different colour of tarmac. There's been a lot of work both on the edges of the track and on the track surface itself. And the management here at Spa should be commended uh, during a very difficult time, both with COVID and uh, with some tragic circumstances around the the management of particularly the higher management of, of Spa over the last couple of years with sticking with the plan and with the investment that's gone on here. So we are back under racing, waiting to find out when the pit stop window will open. They will be stopping in the downhill endurance pits, which is where Nick Damon has positioned himself. So I'm going to speculate that our leader, writer engineering, Florian Yalitz, who I re now remember from TCR International many years ago. This will be his first prototype race because he's been doing GT4 racing, both the DTM Trophy uh, and uh, ADAC uh, over the last couple of years. So this is the first time he's uh, in a very different feeling machine and doing a good job at the head of the field, uh, ahead of a very experienced James Winslow. Let's not forget, James has been around racing anything and everything for many, many moons. Uh, and Florian Janitz, at the age of just 24 years of age, really breaking away from the rest of the field. It's three Ligiers at the front of the field, uh, then the Duquesne, then the best of the Ginettas. Speed Factory is another Ligier, and Gebhard Motorsport, that's another Ligier. That's your top seven as they went across the line with half an hour to go, plus one lap. Pit stop window is now going to open in exactly two minutes' time from now. And it will be open for, yeah, still for 10 minutes. Still for 10 minutes. So from 10.31 exactly local time, which is where we are in the morning. And that will close at a second before 41 minutes past this hour. So 19 minutes before the top of the next hour. Work that one out. So calculations going on down in the pit lane about how long you leave your drivers out. Now, if we start the pit stop sequence and the safety car then comes out, the pit stop sequence will continue. If there is another intervention by the safety car, it will have to be a decision from race control because generally speaking, the standing regulations are if the safety car is out, the pit stop window is not started. Obviously, you're going to get to a point in the race if that keeps happening, that you have to have the pit stop. And that's when race control may have to intervene. But for the moment, it is still down to the teams. And we have 50 seconds before it opens. I don't think the lead cars, Ben, are going to be at the pits by the time this 
that it opens, but the cars further they need back to. might to be. Yeah, and that makes sense because the guys at the head of the field perhaps have their more experienced or faster driver, so they don't need to j jump straight into the pits. The guys further back might have their less experienced drivers in because, as I said earlier, there isn't a uh, regulation for that. So they might be looking to jump into the pits as soon as possible. Look at the back of the shot, and for the moment, yellow f green flags flying for some yeah. reason. Yeah, there um, must be a yellow further back. I haven't seen anything. That wasn't the first lap since we've gone back racing, was it? No. Anyway, nobody goes to the pits. Uh, they all carry on. Yeah, correct. I would say the only t the only car in our top three that is possibly with the lesser experienced driver is Berke Bessler, the Turkish driver, um, has Marvin Dienst as his teammate. So of the two, you would expect Marvin to be the faster of those two drivers. Pit window is now open. So we are counting down. We are 24 seconds into the pit window. And it's still right from Inter Europol, from Talk Sport. They'll spread out uh, a little bit. Conrad in a battle with right ahead speed factory racing so axel jeffries in the janetta the conrad blue and black car trying to chase down the blue and yellow so the blue and yellow the black and yellow speed factory racing number five that's a Ligier right ahead and that's giorgio rosa the italian driver slightly further ahead into europol has got top sport james winslow then with Berke Bessler in his mirrors and the leader pulling away. Been a very measured drive, this, by Florian Janitz. Uh, Elke Ongemeyer will be waiting. Togged up, I am sure, ready to go. Probably been waiting in race kit for quite some time now. We're some 12 minutes past where we expected that the pit window would open, so you don't want to be scrambling around at the last minute and forgetting where you've put your radio earplugs or where's my right glove gone. Always have everything ready. If I'm not mistaken, this is uh, Giorgio's first race for some 10 years in that speed factory car. Uh, so doing a really good job to be uh, keeping ahead of Axel Jeffries, who not only has done lots and lots of relevant racing recently, he's also one of the lead instructors at, uh, at the Dubai Autodrome. Yeah. Uh, and so he spends a lot of time uh, in the car. Interesting that he's chosen to get some race experience uh, in this brand new prototype cup Germany. Uh, this is the very, very first race ever. Uh, of this championship, they are using the pit in after La Source. Correct. So yeah. Correct. So it comes into the pits, Berke Bessler then for Tox Sport uh, to hand over to Marvin Dietz. And Nick Damon is there. The first stopper is the seventh car. Uh, that's the uh, red with the spider website that stops on its marks. It's just a driver change, of course, and a tyre pressure check. And here comes a flurry of cars. In comes the uh, the 12 machine. That's the racing experience. Gary Hauser will be getting into that one. I recognise the Luxembourg flag on his jacket, jacket, his overalls. Uh, the 21 cars also in. That's Muller Motorsport. I think you said Mateus was in there. The course, thing to remember about these stops is they are just driver change. The only other thing you can do is you can clean the windscreen, you can check and adjust the tyre pressures. So that's what they're doing. The driver change should be possible to be done regardless of your um, quality. So if you've got two AMs, even the time the two AMs are stopping, because of course, as Ben pointed out, they're not doing that massive trundle through the F1 pits and then down the heritage pits. They're uh, turning in off the, uh, the, the Eau Rouge. So it's quite a short pit lane, actually. So that means that is the stop will, ca will count. All three cars are ready to go. Actually, the third, 12 car is still just doing the final little bit of a seat beltery. The others are about to go. There's just a little bit of a check. The get ready, turn the engine on issue is given to the 21 car. Now, it's interesting, of course, because they may actually stop at different times. Don't forget, the first car to come in was the 7, and that is further down towards pit exit. Engine running on the 12, engine running on the 21, and 7 is a bit further away. And the 12, has he been released? The man's lifted up the... Uh... Oh, no, it's the uh, 21. So definitely a short stop for the 21. The 7 has gone as well, and the 12 is still sitting there. I'm not sure if it should be sitting there or whether there's an issue. Yeah, there's an issue. Uh, uh, in fairness, it appeared that Gary was having a bit of a problem getting his gloves on 
So uh, that was um, a, a, a longer stop. Uh, but certainly the seven car um, was a slightly, like I think, five seconds longer than the 21, which uh, came last and left first. As the lead cars go past, so exactly a lap effectively is yes. lost by making the stop. Thanks, Nick. Yeah, good point that Nick makes there, Ben, that, that even on a long lap like this, with a minimum 85, and in fact, I don't think there is anybody who's taking 85, it's 95 and above seconds, pit in to pit out. There's bags of time to change the driver, and, and that was a mistake then by the racing experience team that uh, the number 12 car, Gary Hauser, did not get, uh, it wasn't ready to pull away when the lollipop man lifted his, uh, his lollipop, as it were, uh, and he was sitting there for a good five or six seconds, uh, and that may well cost them later on. Our leader then, right at engineering, still out front, the number 24 car, Florian Yannick, to hand over to okay, Angemeyer. Coming down the hill now, will this be the time? I'm just looking at the time, 36 and a half minutes, and they're doing two minutes 14. Remember, they have to be in the pits lane uh, within the next, it's just coming up to 10.37 now. Probably could do one more lap, but then it would be getting tight. So let's see if they are on the Ben Constantura's tactics of leave your faster driver in as long as possible, or whether they play it a little bit safer and get that car in to give a run to the checkered flag. So Tox Sports pit stop uh, in total was uh, one minute 55 seconds. Uh, that goes, uh, they are in a different class to the 21 machine uh, of Mullen Motorsport, which did a pit stop of 145. Interestingly though, they are, the 21 car is in the same class as the 12 machine, yeah. but the 12 machine did a pit stop of 155. Yeah. So, uh, so they so were, were yeah. slow. Yeah. Uh, we do expect most people to be doing 145s through the pits, except for the 777, uh, James Winslow aboard that car, uh, and the number four machine, which we won't see because it's crashed out. Yeah, uh, and also don't forget the... Uh, the uh, Conrad machine as well, because that's a single driver. Yes. Nick Damon, you have the leader in the pits. Finally, the right has come in. Also have the Euro Interpol. I have the 11 and the 2. Everyone's come in, in effect, who hadn't come in before. Uh, so Axel Jeffries has come in, in the Conrad car. He'll be sitting there getting bored for about uh, two minutes. Uh, Elke Angemar getting into the uh, the leading machine. Uh, Florian Janet. Even that car did arrive a little bit before the Euro Interpol and some of the others. We're really interested to see how they go out again. Now, we know that Axel Jeffries is carrying a five second extra penalty um, for his solo run. So that he will be probably dropping back a couple of positions. But these four, four of the, sorry, five of the six cars are in, came in pretty much line astern. But um, I don't know if any of them have a more advantageous pit, pit um, timing due to their driver makeup. So it'll be interesting when they go across. Um, a lot of fiddling in the uh, 24 fiddling. car in front. Yeah, they're, they're, Adjustment, seem, surely, well, Nick, not yes, fiddling. Well, all right. What I can see is hands f flapping about on, uh, on the seat belts through the windows. They try to get the uh, drivers settled. I think actually that's OK. The 24 car is settled and ready to go. Still some work being done on the car a couple ahead of me, which I think is the Gebhardt Motors car. That's still not quite changed the driver yet. Um, that's still going on. Engine fired up on the 24. Uh, I think the engine's fired up on the Euro Interpol car as well because the lights are on at the back. Uh, yeah, don't get problem with the Gebhardt. And away goes our leader. And he's, oh, no, but he's overtaking the pits in a 777 car. Uh, Euro Interpol, and he's actually got to third. So two cars pulled in front of him during the running lane. Now, unless they had a shorter pit stop mandated or a more efficient, faster running, more optimistic stopwatch, um, that's not gone very well for them. But yeah, so right to drop down to third, uh, just on the pit stops. And there goes Axel Jeffries. He's a long, long way behind. Those five seconds, you know, when you haven't got those earlier laps to make a gap or even catch up, big problem. Three wide then of those cars that have just left the pit on slightly cooler tyres. And the number 11 Vokic Beagle Team Monchau car, the white and red car, into Le Combe, just about holding onto its position. But for a moment there, they were spread across the track. And that this outlap, as in any motorsport, 
Ben Constantinus really, really crucial to how quickly they get their tyres back up to temperature and pressure. And we've only got 18 minutes left now. It was a shorter pit stop for the 777 car as per their regulation, as per their driver makeup. Uh, so Damien Siocek going out of the pits in the lead, but even going up Eau Rouge in pit lane seems slower than the guys behind. So I think he's already dropped down to fourth position and they've barely got round half a lap. So really not getting the confidence in the inter, inter Europol competition tyres and it has meant that uh, WRT I think are now uh, in the lead ahead uh, of the writer where did our guys come in from uh, the, who pitted one lap before where do they blend in where's Marvin Deanst in all of this now that's exactly what I'm trying to work out because we have got a car coming through I think we've got the Korean Kempi Motorsport car back out there by the way the number 72 unless I'm just seeing it's transponder being picked up on one of the return I've roads got, um, that, that what it might have been out of the 24 uh, we'll go down to Nick in just a moment. Stand by, Nick, uh, as I just want to see them come through the timing loop across the line and confirm uh, what I'm thinking. It was just, just a, here's something just to think about. The Conrad Motorsport car with Axel Jeffries behind the wheel was, uh, was 11 seconds away from the leader at the lap before they pit it. Let's see what happens as they go across the line. Now it's going to be a different car that leads, and it is Vockenspiegel from Reiter from Talk Sport. So right to drop down a second. They've gone across the line, then into Europol. They're down to fourth position. Then Mulner up to fifth. And Conrad are still 11 seconds behind the leader. So the outlap by Axel Jeffries has been superb because he's made up the extra five seconds that he had in the pit lane. And he's in and outlaps. Well done. Nick down in the pit lane. Uh, with Florin just out of the uh, right car. How frustrating is it when you're stuck behind the safety car for most of your stint? Um, fortunately, it was a lot of laps behind the safety car. I think it was four laps. I mean, I had a good start into the prototype Cup Germany, gained some 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 mileage in the first in the first lap. But yeah, like you said, the safety car came out pretty early, so I didn't have too much laps in the end to push. Is this your first time at Spa? Or have you been here a few times before? I've been here, I think, three times before, Formula 4, Formula Renault, but it's the first time for me in the LMP3 here, and actually the third day in the car now. <laughs> and how do you think the tracks change with these amendments they've made over the last uh, few months? I could say it, I could tell you how it changed with GT cars, but with the LMP, it just flat out in the Rouge, for example. It's pretty much the same for me. I mean, the curbs are the same, just a different tarmac, pretty much, yeah. Great, so thanks, Florian. Good luck. Thank you. Now he's got to watch his teammate and see how that white number 24 can do. And it is Alke Ongemeyer behind the wheel of the Ligier that has a three quarter of a second gap uh, between himself and the leaders. Uh, he's dropped down into uh, third position, excuse me, on that uh, outlap. So Vockenspiegel from Toxport from Reiter is how they stand at the moment and coming down to the last 15 minutes. Keep an eye on the number two, Black and Conrad Blue, as the leaders are side by side in the bus stop. Now, that is a very brave manoeuvre from the Toxport, Toxport yeah. number seven car. And across the line, just holding on to the lead, the Vockenspiegel team on shout machine. That is the number 11 of Torsten Kratz. So Torsten holding on there, but this is boiling up quite nicely. Uh, keep an eye on Axel Jeffries in sixth position. At the end of that first outlap, remember I told you, he held on to his gap from when he came in the pit lane of 11 seconds to the leader. It's now 8.6 seconds to the leader. He's two tenths behind Mulner, and he's just put the fastest lap of the race in at a two minutes 15.0. The leaders are doing 17s, 18s, and into Europol doing a 20. So that Conrad car is going to come through the field in the next 14 minutes or so. Yes, but Marvin Deans aboard the WRT car, probably uh, the most experienced driver in our field, not necessarily in LMP cars, 
Uh, he's done a lot of driving in GT, uh, both GT uh, at Le Mans level, but also uh, GT4 and GT3, uh, and getting his first real experience, I think, uh, in a prototype car, but did DTM last year for a couple of races, so is a very, very uh, highly experienced driver. That is why he was able to do what he did uh, to get himself up to second, and now uh, looking to try and get himself into the lead and scamper away from that chaser. Uh, it was a drive-through, I think, for Michael Herrich for Gebhardt Motorsport and the number 70. Yeah, violation of Article 39.1, uh, that number 70. I did open the uh, sporting regulations, but they're all in German, <laughs> so no idea. Uh, so that was a drive-through for Michael. Speeding in the pit lane? Yeah. <laughs> My guess. Just, uh, just, just or, throw that out there. Or possibly a violation of the uh, pit lane time. Yeah. Um, but that was a drive through. So he's now right off the back of the field. He's got the five kilometers or so of spa to himself as he's now heading down the hill. New piece of tarmac at Speaker's Corner on the inside for the motorcycles. 12 minutes or thereabouts as the leading two are still battling. This might give a little bit of. Encouragement to Elke Angemer, uh, Angemer from the top sport car because they are slowing each other up. Oh, now side by side coming out of La Source. Fantastic run from the number seven. Marvin Deist took a much tighter line and now challenges to the right hand side down to La Source. Too wide through the first part of La Source. Wow, that was very brave. And it's a full course yellow. Full course yellow has just come out. And where is the incident then? I mean, remarkable reactions there with the two of them side by side into a rouge, through a rouge, and then having to react to a full course yellow as well, right in the middle of the corner. They are absolutely nose to tail once more, but we are unfortunately missing oh, speed factory perhaps uh, off the timing screens. Uh, that would be uh, Santiago Conceptron uh, Serrano, who's got into that Ligier, uh, replacing Giorgio Rosso, who did the first stint. But at the moment, no idea where that car is. And I can't Somewhere see... Somewhere in the third, uh, sec second sector. Yeah. Already uh, getting on for 50 seconds off its projected time. So full course yellow, I noticed, not a safety car. So that is an option for the race director to be able to neutralize the field without packing the field up behind a safety car. It also means, of course, that you can remove full course yellow at any time. You don't have to have the leaders coming to the start finish line. It's much like uh, the code 60 that we'll see in operation over the rest of the weekend here at Spa 4 the Hankook 24 hour series and Kravenic. Uh, Michelin ties on these cars, by the way, for the full season. And so a little bit differential in the rubber, but pleasant weather conditions here. We had the somewhat back to front situation yesterday of every motorsport event in Europe, it seemed, under leaden skies or absolutely torrential rain. And it was beautiful here at Spa and the Weather forecast for the weekend is much the same as we have right now, which is a little bit of high cloud, but mostly blue skies and temperatures in the late teens to early 20s of the centigrade scale. scale. Uh, full course yellow is ending. I, I suspect then in that case that we have had the car of Speed Factory Racing moved. Great work by our hard working Marshals, and our thanks to them in whatever country they are working around. And we are back to green with just on nine minutes to go, Ben. I've been bigging up uh, Marvin Deans quite a lot, but actually the man he's racing with, uh, Torsten Kreitz, Kratz, sorry, uh, third in uh, Asian Le Mans. Uh, over the winter, so has experience in LMP3 uh, with that and also taking pole position and victory uh, at Le Castellet just uh, last weekend. So whilst Marvin Dietz might have the more experience generally, uh, Torsten Kratz does have relevant experience in LMP3. Uh, race for Rinaldi in, uh, in Asia, but it's this team, this car, uh, that was so successful in Paul Ricard last weekend and effectively using this as to gain more and more experience. A great opportunity uh, to 
bring the drivers up to speed. Leonard Weiss, who we saw so fast uh, in the GT3 uh, Creventic qualifying, also in an LMP3 car, so two very different cars to, to handle. Uh, he is the, the effectively the am in that car and was incredibly fast in, our, in the first stint of the race. So they've got it round the right way and put their faster driver in for the second stint. And therefore he is able uh, to, well, was able to keep pace uh, with Top Sport, but they are now clearing off ahead. That short period of full course yellow did not help Axel Jeffries that much. Remember, he was 11, then eight. Now five and a half seconds away from the lead battle, and he's up to fourth position. He's gone by into Europol and Milner Motorsport. Into Europol, the triple seven now dropped down to sixth place as Damien Klozik has not got the speed of James Winslow, and you wouldn't expect that. And for Mulner, the uh, number 21 car, they're down into fifth, uh, and that at the moment is uh, Donna Munding, uh, the German driver in that Duquesne D08. So the leaders now trying to stretch away. 1.2 seconds between first and second and the Conrad Motorsport car is gaining on the battle that is beginning to heat up for second and third. Vorkenspiegel and Reiter now only nine tenths between them. The top four separated by under five seconds now and Axel Jeffries as I suggested he might in the second half of this race with six and a half call it nearly seven minutes to go plus a lap remember. So it depends where the clock runs out. I, th I think he's on for a podium here, possibly better. He's setting very, very good lap times in, the, in green flag racing. Ike Angermeyer is the driver of the white machine that is uh, in third position right now for Writer Engineering. Writer, a team that we've seen quite a lot of at Creventic running the KTM Expo prototypes uh, in the TCX series, although they are kind of a king to uh, an LMP3 car. Uh, they're not actually running in the 24 no. uh, race, uh, the 12-hour race that we're seeing later on today, uh, but they are here represented in LMP3 with Ica. So he, again, kind of relevant experience in LMP3, even if it's not necessarily uh, in this particular car, uh, in that uh, rather amazing KTM uh, prototype. I would say you have a similar experience to what you find in an LMP3 machine. Yeah, GT4 and GT3 versions of, of those cars now produced by KTM in Austria using uh, Audi power plants. And just read earlier on this week that one of them will be going to Bathurst for the 12 hours in the second weekend of May, which I think will be the debut. That's going to be running in the invitation class. I think it's the, the debut for that car in that endurance race. And many of these drivers have endurance experience. Good news for the leader. And the number seven, Marvin Dienst driven Ligier. He's away by about three seconds now. And that's because we have got a battle beginning to brew. Elegant isolation for the dark red car as it's pulling away, coming down the hill through Puon and down towards the chicane, the right left chicane at Fang. But second, third and fourth are closing in. Axel Jeffries now brought the gap to the leader under five seconds with another fastest lap of the race last time around for him. A 214.973, that's his best lap of the race. And he's closing in at pace now on third position. And just as you thought, Iker Engemeyer could focus on getting up into second position, that the mirrors of his car are now filled with the Conrad Motorsport, Axel Jeffries, Zimbabwean driver. And suddenly his focus will be on defending that podium spot, which is exactly what he didn't need. But Jeffries' pace in the second half of this race, really, really much, much stronger, even than those first couple of laps they had after the safety car period. Obviously beforehand, didn't have much of a chance to show, but now really, using the best of the Michelin tyre. And we've got all three of the manufacturers, the chassis manufacturers represented in the top four, two Ligiers, one Duquesne and the Ginetta. Ligiers first and third, Duquesne second, Ginetta fourth at the moment, but that may well change. I tell you who's not a, a million miles away either, Ben, the number 21 in fifth position, the Mulder Motorsport car, is uh, Donna Mun Munding and Donna is, is coming. The Belgian team, so very much on home track here. And this battle for second, third, fourth, may become second, third, fourth, and fifth. 
We're down to three and a half minutes to go. We're lapping in around about two minutes 15 to two minutes 16. And this battle for third is intriguing. So closely matched these cars. It's all down to the drivers, how late they are on the brakes, how early they can get on the throttle. Who's held on to performance from the Michelin tyres? We've had two interventions, one by the safety car, one just a full course yellow. So we shouldn't have worked the Michelin tyres too hard. But when you come back to pace after a pit stop or after a yellow situation, you have to be so careful that you don't overstress the tyres in the first few laps. So who has got the performance on the Michelin here for the last, what is going to be this one? Maybe two more, but it'll depend when the leader crosses the line, remember. So this is going to be dictated whether there's one more lap after the next lap or two. That's going to be Marvin Deans who will dictate that when he goes across the line this time and next time around. 2.24 to go. Where's Marvin? Now four seconds to the good. And then the next three cars are within a second and a half. And for the first time in a few laps, Axel Jeffries has actually lost ground to the leader there because he's now bottled up behind Wockenspiegel, Team Monschau in second, the number 11 car, and the number 24 of Ryder Engineering. And that is allowing the Mulder Motorsport, as I said, of uh, uh, Don Armunding to catch up. He was the quickest bar the leader last time around. His fastest lap of the race, 2.15.2 for the fifth place car and we're going to have a four car battle ben for the second two spots the last two spots on the box yeah we've seen donna in the uh, 2021 michelin uh le mans cup uh, for black falcon didn't score very many points but that's really his only experience in in any high powered formula because before that it was all about nurburgring kind of uh, lower class touring cars uh, so really interesting to see him building more experience uh, in lmp3 and being able to run on the pace of these guys ahead all right our leader is able to do two 14 eights but uh, this next battle in the 15s when they want to be uh, they are losing quite a bit of time in the middle sector of the lap um, presumably where the tyres are not quite as uh, grippy as they once were at the start of the race. But as you say, we're closing up into a four-car train, but nobody really seems to want to throw it down the inside as yet with just 50 seconds remaining. Yeah, so it, there'll be this lap, the end of this lap, and one more. The leader is catching the number five Speed Factory racing car, which is moving again now. We thought that might have been the cause of the full course yellow. It's it can be dragged out of the gravel and continue, can't it? I, I would have thought so, yeah. And it's uh, Santiago Concepcion who is behind that with having taken over the car from Giorgio Rosa, who started the lease year. So the leader will have traffic on this lap and therefore the battle for second, third, fourth and fifth will probably catch it on the final lap. But it will be just one more lap for the leader when he crosses the line next time around is rumbling through past us was now who was that who just went through that was the Gebhardt motorsport car that's gone through in eighth position we lost two cars early on remember Nielsen racing and crying Kempi motorsport with a incident coming out of fame still haven't really worked out whether they hit each other or they spun in sympathy to one or other of them. But some damage to, some big damage to the Nielsen car. Marvin Dietz is still able to be incredibly consistent. Looking at his split times, his lap times, within a tenth of where he's been throughout the whole of the race. But battle for third position now. Uh, time lost, presumably, there by Writer Engineering on the uh, exit of the chicane. And Comrade Axel Jeffries trying to go around the outside of La Source. Doesn't work there, but lines himself up for the run down the hill to Eau Rouge. Didn't seem to get the gri grip on the inside line there and wasn't able to go side by side, as we saw a few laps ago with the previous battle for second position over the top at Radion and sitting right in behind them, Mulder Motorsports and Don Armundi just keeping a watching brief. This has allowed Vockenspiegel team Monschau in second position with Torsten Kratz 
to be able to build up what, in the context of what we've seen in this battle. That's a decent gap that Kratz has got now. Back to the battle for third. Three cars for the last step on the podium. I, I don't know how they didn't manage to get past him, to be honest. That, uh, that uh, uh, Ike Engemeyer must have a really good straight line speed, takes a conventional sweep in, holds the inside line for Speaker's Corner. We wait to see them come through the turn and still holds on, but the car is all over the place. He's really wide in certain corners, but when he gets on the power, uh, Axel Jeffries can't get alongside. Yeah, very interesting, isn't it? The Duquesne seems to be good from the center of the corner out, maybe a little really bit does. better than the, the Ginetta, but he's having trouble getting that car turned into the corner. Maybe he's overworked the front Michelins, but the back ones are certainly pushing him forward. Last half a lap now. Looks like the first round of the 2022 Prototype Cup Germany is going to go the way of Top Sport, oh. backing up their great performance in the European Le Mans series at Paul Ricard over the Easter weekend. But the, the interest is not even for second at the moment because Wockenspiegel have pulled out a second and a half now. Well done to uh, Wockenspiegel and Torsten Kratz for holding on to that. But the big question now is whether Axel Jeff Jeffrey driving solo can make some kind of... He's not going to be able to. No, he made a big mistake in karting. was too wide, had no momentum. And a win then for Top Sport. Second place, easing up on the last lap, but still taking second position. Wagenspiegel, Ryder Engineering will come through in third. And Axel Jeffrey, I think, will be frustrated with that. He was the fastest man on the track in the second part of the race after the pit stops, which were delayed, remember. They were pushed back because of the intervention of the safety car for that two-car accident on the exit of Fane that took out Nielsen Racing and Karayan Kempi Motorsport. So Marvin Dienst comes home to a hero's welcome in that red with uh, hexagonal pattern. Number seven, that's the Ligier that has taken it from the Duquesne of Wockenspiegel. So well done to car number seven and team seven, Marvin Dienst and Berke Bessler did his job at the start. And that bodes very well, doesn't it? Uh, for Wockenspiegel team Monshu uh, to, for their participation in the 12 hours of Spa later on today. Good confidence builder, isn't it? Well, yeah, the and, I mean, the Ferrari was incredibly fast in qualifying anyway. They had a good three, four second gap over the rest of the field. Second position for them, eight and a half seconds back in the end because Toxport's uh, Marvin Deans just did such a solid job in the second half of the race. Very much which driver did which stint decided this one because of the safety car in the first stint. And if you did have your faster driver in the first stint, then it was kind of nulled. Uh, but uh, a great drive for Marvin Deans in the second half of that one to take victory. Now, Nick Damon has positioned himself uh, down under the podium in the downhill pits. I might get a chance to talk to some of the drivers there. I think all three of the crews on the podium are pretty happy big smiles from the outgoing drivers that was a really nice run the last what was it 18 minutes or so after that uh, final pit stop interrupted by the full course yellow but not even for a full lap felbermeyer overalls for Angermeyer, who's yes. obviously driven with Felbermeyer in the uh, KTM back in Mugello, I think it was. So the podium celebrations to come. I, I think what we're seeing, I think what we're seeing, Ben, is very interesting for this new iteration of Spa with the extension of the gravel traps. Now, the cleanup crews and the marshals were excellent in that, but you know, a relatively small field, um, only 11 cars started. So the ability to be able to work between the passages of the safety car was, was fairly easy. I, in bigger grids, uh, I think that's gonna be a little more difficult. Let's uh, give you the provisional results then of race one of the 2022 Prototype Cup Germany Talk Sport. Berke Bessler starting and Marvin Dean springing home. A Ligier, the number seven, to the victory. Pushed for quite a lot of the race, actually, by Wagenspiegel, Team Monschau, 
Leonard Weiss and Torst Torsten Kratz finishing off the race. Right to engineering, Florian Janitz led the first part of the race. Elke uh, Angermeyer uh, coming out of the pits, having lost the lead from a slightly different balance of pit stops there. And Axel Jeffrey, certainly the fastest man after the pit stops, came out in sixth or seventh position, some 11 seconds behind the leader. Ironically, at the end, he finished 11 seconds behind the leader, but he was down to under or round about four seconds behind the leader at one point. Finishing off uh, the results, Milner Motorsport in fifth, racing experience in sixth, uh, in seventh, inter Europol competition, Jamie Winslow, James Winslow, doing a great job at the start. Uh, Demian Klosek uh, having, not having quite the speed. Uh, in eighth position, Gebhard Motorsport. Speed Factory Racing uh, lost uh, a few laps there. We think they may have been off the track at one stage in the number five. And Nielsen Racing, the number four. And the Karayan Kempi, Kempi Motorsport, number 72. Uh, they uh, had an early incident in the Decanes. Whether that was a coming together or a spinning in avoidance. Uh, we'll find out, I'm sure, in uh, in the break between. Beautiful weather and the opening round is over and done with. Prototype Cup Germany looked like this for race one. So the second race from here at Spa will be tomorrow, round about the same time, just after 10 o'clock for the green flag. And we'll be back about, uh, we'll be taking about 10 minutes of the pre-race before that. From Ben and from Nick Damon, I'm John Hindorf. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you tomorrow from Spa.